Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation. We've been doing a um, series of lectures on anemia, so we're going to continue that today. Um, again, my name is Premier Charya. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency, and I teach medical student residents in the United States. I'm also an assistant professor of medicine to a large medical school. So <clears throat> today we're going to start, like, I mean, we did uh, uh, microcytic anemia, right? We did, uh, now we're going to look at the hemoly hemolytic anemia, okay? So today's our topic, we're going to start with the hereditary elliptocytosis, okay? So when you talk about herit hereditary elliptocytosis, let's look at our definition first, okay? So somebody read me the definition. It's the congenital. Congenital, right? Hereditary, okay? Hemolytic disorder. In which erythrocytes are elongated or cigar shaped elongated and all this shaped, okay? That's the one like causing a lot of problems. Now, when you look at it, incidence is like one in 5,000, more in African and the Mediterranean. And then look at the clinical features. Somebody read the clinical. 90% of the same, like asymptomatic. Could be like an incident of finding when you do like blood work and all of that, okay? 10% of the people can have problems. They're like 90, um, they could have anemia symptoms like fatigue, shortness of breath, palpitations and all of that. They can also have like jaundice, splenomegaly. And when it comes to the types, there's like four types we need to know. One is, somebody read this one. It's common hereditary elliptocytes. Okay, that is mild and symptoms resolve on its own, right? <clears throat> what is the second one? Louder. Spherocytic elliptocytosis. Okay, and mostly this thing is kind of more common in um, Europe. And again, it's a mild symptoms, right? The third one? Southeast Asian ovalocytes. Okay, and that means it kind of, I mean, in this a special thing is kind of protect them against malaria. And the, the, the one you have to pay a lot of attention to is what? Hereditary <coughs> viropoikilocytosis. This is the most severe type, hemolysis, and all of those things kind of very, very common in these people, okay? So it's good to know the four different types, right? Now let's come to the most important thing we need to know about the pathophysiology. What is the pathophysiology? You got this lipid layer, okay? And then that's be connected to the cytoskeleton by the uh, some membrane associated protein. Okay, let's look at what are the membrane associated protein. You got ankyrin's complex, you got band 3, 4.2, and then ankyrin. Um, and all of these are like membrane associated protein. Okay, then you got the cytoskeleton with the alpha spectrin and beta spectrin. And what does it do? They keep the uh, RBC in the biconcave shape, right? They can go through the sinusoid without any problem. They can squeeze through on the come out the other end, not damage. Okay, everybody understand the um, lipid bilayer and the role of membrane associated protein. This is the cytoskeleton, alpha spectrin, and the beta spectrin. And um, eventually, call, I mean, helping the biconcave shape, just go through sinusoids without any problem. Now, what is the pathophysiology? What happened here, hereditary elliptocytosis? Let's look at it, right? You got mutations going on. This 4.1 R, which is what? Membrane associated protein. You got um, actin membrane associated protein. So, what is spectrin? Cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton. This is also mutated. So all of this mutated. So what's going to happen to the shape? They become elliptical. Okay? So when you become elliptical, can they go through this and squeeze it out and come back in the other side? No. no. What does it happen? Hemolysis, right? You can have jaundice, unconjugated bilirubin, and uh, all of those uh, jaundice uh, hemolysis picture will show up. Okay, now if you look at the lab, most of them are like normocytic normal chronic anemia, right? This is more like a hemolysis picture, hemolytic anemia, right? MCV is going to be normal, increase MCHC, and then hemolysis picture, like somebody tell me what are the you know, labs when you look at the hemolysis? There is an increased LDH, okay, very increased good. haptoglobin, yeah. increased unconjugated bilirubin, very good. increased urovalinogen, okay. and increased reticulocytes more than 3.5%. Very good. So all of this increased LDH, decreased haptoglobin, increased unconjugated bilirubin, increased urovalinogen, of course, always check the reticulocyte count, there's like hemolysis going on. And you can always have like leukocytosis also. And what are the shaped cells? 
Cigar shapes. Cigar shapes, cells, okay? That's what you're going to see in the peripheral smear, so make sure you know that. And you can do like some other tests, so something called osmotic fragility test. Let's see what we're going to do. You take the RBC and then you put it in the hypotonic saline, okay? And you watch it. The sooner hemolysis, increase osmotic fragility. So you're going to have like increased osmotic fragility in this group, okay? Remember that. And then you can have um, <clears throat> RBC autohemolysis. They put RBC in the sterile solution and then kind of watch it and how fast the hemolysis also is going to be faster, right, in this group. And then genetic testing, of course, and how do you treat it? You can, of course, there's a transfusion needed when there's hemolysis, anemia, the cutoff is served, and everybody know that. Splenectomy, <clears throat> and then folic acid, B12 sub supplement, make sure you cover the patient with the vaccination, otherwise infection will be too much. So in, uh, that's what the picture is. Everybody understood about um, keratinated leptocytosis. Just kind of, let's summarize one more time, let me just kind of see this too. Um, there is a meaning of the definition. Erythrocytes are elongated, cigar shaped, and oval shaped, right? And then you got uh, four different types. The severe, what is that? Somebody read that again, really loud. Hereditary pyrocoikilocytosis. Most severe type, okay, hemolysis, and then Make sure you know the pathophysiology. The most important thing is about this pathophysiology, right? You got the phospholipid layer, and then you want them attached to the cytoskeleton, and you got all this protein comes into play, like BAD3, 4.2 ankyrin, and then this is the cytoskeleton, which is alpha spectrum and beta spectrum, and all of this kind of mutated, become elliptical, cannot go through sinusoids, break down hemolysis, okay? And then make sure you know the hemolysis picture, cigar shaped, make sure you know about osmotic fragility test, and then RBC autohemolyte, hemolysis, genetic testing, transfuse, and then splenectomy, make sure you vaccinate those patients, okay? And most important picture is what is this? You can, if you can remember, this picture pretty much you know everything, right? Jaundice. From what hemolysis and cigar shaped okay just when you think about your dysphilocytosis make sure you look at this picture so you can have like memory everything you associated with uh, you know anything with a picture you can remember it more okay so you got the jaundice man smoking a cigarette because this is cigar shaped and jaundice because of hemolysis okay again thank you so much for watching everybody we'll be back with another presentation if you could help us Please subscribe to our channel because all of these videos, they take a lot of effort from a group of people, okay? Thank you again.